Hello everyone, welcome to LAMP Acu Wellness Foundation Inc. Today we will talk about the founder, Dr. Lilia Aquino Martinez Palanca. What's the difference between Western and traditional Chinese acupuncture? Traditional Chinese acupuncture is based on the belief that it can restore the flow of qi, an energy that flows through your body, while Western medical acupuncture is evidence-based and is only administered after a full diagnosis. Dr. Lilia Aquino Marquinez Palanca, the founder of Lab Acu Wellness Foundation, Inc., pioneered the practice of acupuncture in the Philippines in 1972. She was born in Manila, studied at the University of Santo Tomas College of Medicine. After graduation, she proceeded to the U.S., and took up postgraduate training at the Downstate Medical Center in Brooklyn, New York. After her residency, she took a fellowship in cardiopulmonary at the same hospital. But because she had two years more to spend in the U.S., she decided not to spare any idle time. The hospital was looking for an anesthesiology resident. She heard about it, so grabbed the opportunity and volunteered to be in the training program in anesthesia. In the library of the same hospital, and in her reading, she came across an article entitled Deadening of Pain with the Use of Needle. This piqued her interest and became more inquisitive. She then spoke to her husband about it and inquired as to where she could study it. Then, the husband responded by saying, Perhaps you can try Japan to study. She never thought of China because the so-called China at that time was closed. The so-called bamboo curtain was opened only in 1970. In 1970, the Philippine Women's Medical Association received a special invitation from the composer of the song Love is a Many Splendored Thing. She was one of the 20 female delegates and the youngest to have been chosen by Dr. Helen Paulino Abundo, mentor and colleague, to go to the then People's Republic of China. Dr. Palanca was president of the Philippine Women's Medical Association. They were also the first guests of the Chinese Medical Association. When they were there, they were visiting tombs and museums, using their legs so much that one day, her foot gave way to pain, being flat-footed, was enough for one to develop the malady. When the Chinese doctor saw her limping, he inquired as to what happened, because the foot was swollen, one foot was in the shoe. The doctor pitied her and asked, would you like to try acupuncture? This was a providential time. This then was the birth of acupuncture in the Torapalanga. She really felt that the Holy Ghost has come down from heaven, so she went for treatment every day. They do daily treatments for acute cases. After hearing of her treatment, her colleagues confessed that they too were suffering from pain. All of them were treated and felt good. In her case, Dr. Aurora Alcid, who was her roommate, played a big role in her life. While in China, she knowing about her medical background in her training, encouraged Dr. Palanca to study acupuncture. With the help of New Society, she was able to go back to Beijing to study acupuncture. When Dr. Palanca came back, she used acupuncture for all cases of arthritis, migraine, insomnia that didn't respond with mainstream medicine. This was all published and was read in the World Academic Association of Acupuncture in Seoul, Korea. The university was the first to publish in the UNITAS, the official organ of the University of Santo Tomas. This was then picked up by Philippine newspapers, radios, and televisions. The first World Congress in Acupuncture was held also in Manila, Philippines, which Dr. Palanca chaired. Dr. Palanca was then tasked by the Rural Health Regional Director of the government 
to join the rural doctors. They were then able to train the first 400 rural health physicians under the new society. The government took over upon the creation of the government's arm, the so-called PITAC, Philippine Institute of Traditional and Alternative Healthcare. Dr. Juan Flavier, who then was the Secretary of Health, was instrumental in the passage of the law to practice this modality. The Philippine Acupuncture Association, with its boards, rallied behind the passage of the bill. The following names cannot be omitted because they were responsible for what acupuncture in the Philippines is today. Dr. Reynaldo Raimundo, Dr. Fernando Santos, Dr. Bian Arau, Dr. Ricardo Franco, Dr. Leoncia Adan Nobleza, Dr. Benjamin Aquino, Dr. Lehuati Liao, Dr. Mauro Luciano, Dr. Alberto Martinez Laigo, and Dr. Lupo Carlota. The great acupuncturist is a wise artist who treats from the heart. Such an acupuncturist forms a diagnosis from a connection between his or her spirit and the spirit of the patient. Through the placement of needles or the application of acupressure, the acupuncturist's hand is guided completely by the spirit of the patient. Although patients come to us with a myriad of physical and emotional signs and symptoms, we must look far beyond these obvious signs to the root of their pathology. The patient's main complaint should never be the sole focus of our treatment efforts. This is not to say that one should not address the superficial symptoms. We certainly want to provide our patients with symptom relief, but the primary focus of our treatment must be the cause of their symptoms. Balance will prevail when a practitioner reaches the root of a disorder and helps the patient detach from his or her pathology. A practitioner lacking in spirit will fail to search for the root of disease in a patient spirit. These words from Dr. Palanca explores what it means to treat from the heart. Sometimes we become so consumed by skills and knowledge that we overlook the importance of our personal qualities in our treatment efforts. If we are to address the spirit of our patients, it is necessary that we as practitioners possess a high level of character and spiritual development. To be effective, needling must be performed by an acupuncturist whose spirit connects with the patient's heart and spirit. What the Chinese refer to as knowing how is necessary for the acupuncturist spirit and hand to know how to locate the patient's spirit. Knowing how comes from the spirit and provides us with the knowledge to live a balanced life. It is a combination of intelligence, wisdom, talent, and capacity. This state involves having awareness or knowledge of a patient's condition, an ability to express this knowledge to oneself and one's patient, and being able to manifest power or healing through one's heart. Dr. Palanca proposes nine keys of healing, broken down into three triads. These keys describe qualities possessed by great acupuncturists. You will see that with each successive triad, the qualities become less practical and more spiritual in nature. The lower triad consists of skill, knowledge, and intention. Nearly anyone who graduates from a reputable Chinese medicine program will possess skill and knowledge. Intention, however, requires additional thought on the part of the acupuncturist, as it involves more than simply placing needles skillfully at the precise acupuncture points. It is necessary for a practitioner to possess all three of these qualities before being able to aspire to the higher levels of healing. The middle triad consists of trust, intuition, and integrity. Integrity and intention are essential to inspire the necessary energetic changes in a patient. For the real source of imbalance to reveal itself, 
A patient must have trust in the integrity of the practitioner. How often do we consider the importance of integrity in today's world? Sadly, not often enough. The upper triad consists of forgiveness, compassion, and unconditional love or wisdom. The healing process begins when a practitioner confers unconditional love with each treatment. As this energy is recorded in every cell and at all levels of the patient. Dr. Palanka explains that real healing involves much more than working on physical, emotional, and mental imbalances. Healing involves helping our patients find their true path in life. Once they uncover who they really are, the process of healing will blossom at all levels. Dr. Palanga contends that practitioners who hold all nine keys are of the highest proficiency and are best able to address the deepest levels of imbalance within a patient. The energies of the three triads are in all of us, but it may take some work for them to express themselves. Once we possess all nine keys, we will have the power to unlock the true imbalance in our patients. How many of the nine keys do you possess? There are several things we can do as practitioners to help unlock these nine keys of healing that lie within us. After watching this presentation, you are urged to look into your heart and determine whether you are on the path to becoming a great acupuncturist. If we are to help our patients discover their true natures, it is essential that we are on the healing path ourselves. This is not to say that we need to have completed our process of healing. However, because it is a continuous process that occurs throughout life. We must transcend the most basic level of knowledge and skill and strive to develop our intuition. Opening our capacity for intuition is essential, as intuition is the only part of us that can fully comprehend the nature of things. Treating patients intuitively, based on a connection with their spirit, truly captures the essence of this ancient Chinese art. For intuition to operate freely, we must learn to quiet our minds. Once we are open to intuition, our spirit will guide us along our healing path. This path is not for the weak at heart. It is anything but easy. The rewards of spiritual growth are well worth the arduous journey. To truly help our patients on their journey requires that we carry the scars of having transformed ourselves. We cannot expect to help another find a path we ourselves have not yet traveled. As practitioners of Oriental Medicine, we should attempt to raise the consciousness of our patients. In doing so, however, we must be careful not to push them to a level they are not yet ready to experience. We must be sensitive to the level of consciousness of our patients in order to provide them with treatments that will be the most helpful. It is critical to treat each patient as an individual. Each person heals in his or her own way. We must have the sensitivity and compassion to realize this and work within this reality. Our purpose as practitioners of Oriental Medicine is to help patients improve their health and quality of life, whatever that may mean to the patient. It is not our place to label or judge our patients in the process. It would be naive and egotistical of us to think we understand what the patient is experiencing. It is their process. Just because a patient may present in a way we do not understand or that makes us uncomfortable does not mean we should intervene to change the process. Often our silent presence in the moment is enough. Patients may have emotional releases during or in the weeks following a treatment. 
We need not attempt to stop the release or explain it away. Our compassion is what is really needed by the patient in these situations, not our advice. It is important that our office provides a safe, peaceful environment in which patients can be themselves and express their true feelings and emotions without being judged. In our training as acupuncturists, we are not taught how to deal with psychological or emotional imbalances. While experience in dealing with these issues makes us better healers, all that is needed is the ability to really listen to our patients. If we listen from a place of non-judgment, compassion, and uh, authenticity, and show support for our patients, they will feel safe to engage their personal and spiritual resources to initiate their journey of healing. By listening to and giving hope to our patients and seeing them as they have the potential to be, healing is already underway. People need to play an active role in their healing, as it is not a passive process. It is essential that we work with our patients rather than simply work on them as though they were plastic acupuncture models. By explaining the diagnosis in simple terms and providing suggestions on ways patients can help themselves, for example, nutrition, herbs, acupressure, affirmations, we are empowering them. It is not our task to convince patients to follow our advice. Rather, we must help patients discover for themselves what changes they need to make to regain their health. Providing patients with several suggestions allows them the opportunity to decide what would be best for them. In Dr. Palanca's experience, the more tools offered to patients, the further and faster they will travel on their healing journey. If we feel we are giving more to our patients than we are receiving, we must stop and look inside ourselves. Each patient can teach us important lessons, but we will only receive these lessons with an open heart. Our patients can teach us not only about imbalances, but about ourselves. Those patients who demand the most attention from us and who we find irritate and frustrate us are teaching us patience and compassion. If we open our eyes and hearts, we will realize that our most difficult patients offer us the gift of our greatest spiritual growth. Those are the words of wisdom from Dr. Lilia Aquino Martinez Palanca. Integrative medicine uses an evidence-based approach to treat the whole person, your mind, body, and soul, your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual needs are all involved. So integrative medicine uses a combination of therapies. It integrates conventional approaches and complementary therapies to achieve optimal health and healing. Integrative medicine focuses on you as a whole person and not just your illness or disease. While it seeks to understand the underlying cause of your symptoms or condition, it does so by looking at your complete mind, body, and spirit. Integrative medicine uses an evidence-based approach to improve your health and wellness. Integrative medicine believes your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual needs affect your health. It believes those needs rely on each other and affect your entire well-being. There are many different aspects to address. So, integrative medicine uses a combination of therapies and lifestyle changes. Functional medicine is a systems biology-based approach that focuses on identifying and addressing the root cause of disease. Each symptom or differential diagnosis may be one of many contributing to an individual's illness. As the graphic illustrates, a diagnosis can be the result of more than one cause. For example, 
Depression can be caused by many different factors, including inflammation. Likewise, a cause such as inflammation may lead to a number of different diagnoses, including depression. The precise manifestation of each cause depends on the individual's genes, environment, and lifestyle, and only treatments that address the right cause will have lasting benefit beyond symptom suppression. With traditional medicine, you are either healthy or sick. If you are healthy, then you do not require medication. If you are sick, then you generally will be given a prescription to control whatever symptoms you might have. The goal of functional medicine is to restore important chemical and hormonal balances within your body to prevent the onset of disease. The yellow area represents the functional range where the patient is not yet sick by medical standards but is clearly on their way to becoming sick. If you can treat the cause of the problem here, you can prevent it from developing into the full-blown disease. In other words, don't wait until it's too late. Stop the problem before it starts. The functional medicine model of care offers a patient-centered approach to chronic disease management. It seeks to answer the question, why are you ill? so you can receive personalized, effective care for your needs. Functional medicine providers spend time listening to you and gathering your medical history. We use this information to identify the root causes of the illness, including triggers such as poor nutrition, stress, toxins, allergens, genetics, and your microbiome, the bacteria living in and on your body. Once we identify the triggers, we can customize a healthy living plan for you. Your plan will address many aspects of your life, from physical needs including nutrition, exercise and sleep, to mental and emotional stressors related to social work and community life. We get to know you, not just your illness. Before your first appointment, we take a comprehensive medical history and lifestyle assessment to see a complete picture of your health. We use this assessment to identify disease triggers and build a holistic treatment plan. Conventional medicine merely examines individual symptoms and presumes that they are related to various body parts. Functional medicine permits you and the physician to examine the symptoms to establish the affected systems in your body. Functional medicine perceives people as unique individuals with their physiological and genetic makeup. Everyone has different stressors, toxic and environmental exposures, as well as numerous underlying factors that affect our health status. Functional medicine is a one-on-one -on -one partnership between the practitioner and patient. Moreover, it seeks to attain a lasting path to wellness. Acupuncture involves the insertion of very thin needles through your skin at strategic points on your body. A key component of traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture is most commonly used to treat pain. Increasingly, it is being used for overall wellness, including stress management. Traditional Chinese medicine explains acupuncture as a technique for balancing the flow of energy or life force known as qi, believed to flow through pathways or meridians in your body. By inserting needles into specific points along these meridians, acupuncture practitioners believe that your energy flow will rebalance. In contrast, many Western practitioners view the acupuncture points as places to stimulate nerves, muscles, and connective tissue. Some believe that this stimulation boost your body's natural painkillers. The full spectrum of acupuncture indications remains unexplored. There was a study done where a cross-sectional survey among 419 acupuncturists was conducted to investigate the top 10 and top 99 acupuncture indications in private clinics in the United States. They found the top 10 indications to be lower back pain, depression, anxiety, headache, arthritis, allergies, general pain, female infertility, insomnia, neck pain, and frozen shoulder. 
among the top 99 indications, pain represents the largest category. And mental health management, especially for mood disorders, is in greatest demand. The following popular groups are immune system dysfunctions, gastrointestinal diseases, gynecology, and neurology. In addition, specialty index, commonality index, and the potential to become medical specialties were estimated for each indication. Demographic analysis suggests that China-trained acupuncturists tend to have broader indication spectrums, but the top conditions treated are primarily decided by local needs. Also, gender, resident states, age and clinical experience all affect indication distributions. The data for the first time outlines the profile of acupuncture treatable conditions in the U.S. and is valuable for strategic planning in acupuncture training, healthcare administration, and public education. All therapies come with both risks and benefits. A person should always seek medical advice before undertaking any therapy. Possible risks of acupuncture are the following. Bleeding, bruising, and soreness may occur at the insertion sites. And sterilized needles may lead to infection. In rare cases, a needle may break and damage an internal organ. The Food and Drug Administration regulates acupuncture needles as medical devices. Their manufacture and labeling need to meet certain standards. The needles must be sterile, non-toxic, and labeled for one use only by a licensed practitioner. As with any complementary therapy, it is advisable to use acupuncture alongside conventional treatments in cases of chronic or severe conditions. Da Qi is commonly translated as needle sensation, sometimes as arrival of Qi or needling response. The current view holds that there is no significant difference between them. However, some have different understandings of these three words. Needling sensation is mainly meant subjective feelings and perceived responses of patients and acupuncturists. Arrival of qi is a healing process which activates the anti-pathogenic qi to expel the pathogens. The needling response suggests the final aim of acupuncture. The qi is usually used to describe the subjective sensations felt by the patients during acupuncture treatment but the view is not shared by all, and some argue that the qi comprises not only the patient's sensations, but also the acupuncturist's senses. Furthermore, there are few people suggesting that the qi also includes propagated sensation along meridians and the externally visible physical signs due to acupuncture treatment. The risks of acupuncture are low, if you have a competent, certified acupuncture practitioner using sterile needles. Common side effects include soreness and minor bleeding or bruising where the needles were inserted. Single-use disposable needles are now the practice standard, so the risk of infection is minimal. Not everyone is a good candidate for acupuncture. By targeting the acupuncture points, it helps the body relax and speed up the recovery process. After the session is complete, make sure to take things easy. Have enough rest and enjoy yourself. Taking these steps after getting an acupuncture treatment can help ensure a positive experience and outcome. Resting after the treatment does not literally mean lying down the entire day. It means taking it easy. Avoid heavy physical activities and staying up late at night. Make sure to get enough rest and sleep. While some experience a jolt of energy after the session, practitioners recommend savoring the boost because you might need it in the following days. Allowing your body to rest after the treatment helps restore your physical and emotional well-being as the healing sets in motion. To maximize relaxation after acupuncture, schedule a massage therapy session. Four responses to treatment, gradual or progressive improvement, amelioration of symptoms, then gradual return. 
exacerbation or rebound of symptoms, then gradual return, no change. A common treatment plan for a single complaint would typically involve one or two treatments a week. The number of treatments will depend on the condition being treated and its severity. In general, it's common to receive six to eight treatments. Acupuncture is seldom used as a sole treatment, however, but rather in conjunction or as an adjunct to traditional medical care. As more studies are done showing the efficacy of acupuncture to treat various types of pain, insurance companies are beginning to take notice. Acupuncture points are believed to stimulate the central nervous system. This, in turn, releases chemicals into the muscles, spinal cord, and brain. These biochemical changes may stimulate the body's natural healing abilities and promote physical and emotional well-being. The essence of acupuncture mechanism is micro-injury, increased local blood flow, facilitated healing, and analgesia. Acupuncture needle stimulates the nerves in the local tissues. This causes the release of neuropeptides, resulting in vasodilation and increased circulation locally. One of the main effects of acupuncture is the release of not only the endogenous opioids, beta endorphins, encephalins, dynorphins, but also non-opioid compounds such as serotonin, norepinephrine, GABA, and also the oxytocin, which seems to be essential for the induction of functional changes in various organs. A key principle of acupuncture is something called qi. Qi is most frequently translated into energy, and according to traditional Chinese medicine, it is the vital force that resides within all of us and everything that surrounds us. Qi moves throughout the body via pathways called meridians or channels. According to TCM theory, there are 14 main meridians and 12 of those correspond to specific organ systems in the human body and the other two meridians run up the front and back of the body. Along these pathways are points known as acupoints. Acupoints tend to have high concentrations of nerve endings that are all capable of triggering biochemical and physiological changes throughout the body. These changes can occur instantaneously or over time, depending on the individual. When a needle is inserted into an acupoint, sensory receptors are stimulated and a chain reaction occurs. The sensory receptor stimulates the nerve, which then transmits impulses to the brain specifically the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal system. This interaction between the hormones, glands, and your brain create a powerful reaction that regulates bodily processes and brings about homeostasis. If you have never tried acupuncture, we encourage you to. Even if you have no known illnesses, aches, or pains, acupuncture can still be beneficial overall. We all have stress, and over time, stress can make people unwell. Acupuncture can combat the effects of stress and help prevent disease. You won't believe how incredible you feel after a good acupuncture treatment. According to research, acupuncture is a valuable but non-pharmacological tool in the patients with regular chronic tension-type headaches. After multiple clinical trials, the researcher found out that this treatment is effective for headaches and migraine. Acupuncture proves to be effective against chronic back pain. In Berlin, many patients with chronic back pain are treated with acupuncture and a significant difference in pain is reported after eight weeks of treatments in the patients. A report from Chinese Medicine University shows a beneficial effect of acupuncture in reducing the symptoms of insomnia compared with no treatment. The overall analysis found out that patients who are taking herbal treatments of medications to help with the sleep showed much better effects after taking acupuncture treatment. According to many studies, acupuncture can help in boosting immunity and speeding up the recovery process after chemotherapy. It is also by a researcher that the treatment of acupuncture improves the platelet count and immunity. 
Studies on the topic also claim that acupuncture is effective at reducing Parkinson's disease. Studies also suggest that acupuncture can also relieve the symptoms of age-related cognitive decline as it creates a neural response in certain areas of the brain, such as the thalamus and putamen. Many of the doctors are now suggesting acupuncture as a treatment to reduce the pain of labor and pregnancy, balance hormones, and reduce stress. It is considered to be a safe treatment in pregnancy because it reduces emotional strain and physical symptoms experienced by the mother. Thank you very much for your attention and see you on our next videos.